live from Berlin, Germany, it's Monday, and the heat is on. This LEC offseason was the most turbulent we have ever seen. Friends become foes. Betrayal at every turn. It may not be Game of Thrones, but the winter split is here. This is Grudge Match. That's right. Welcome to Grudge Match. Yesterday, at 2100 hours on January 22nd, which was yesterday. LEC veteran Oduwamne faced off against his former team, Ro Koi. Koi. Oduwamne told us that he didn't hold anything against his former teammates while Larson stoked the fire, saying it would be funny, I quote, if Oduwamne fed. Sounds like a grudge. Odo got off to a hot start, but the, quiet tur the tide quickly turned in the Barren River, flashing and dashing straight into a wall. He turned to his first target, but they had a stopwatch, so he turned to the next but they had a stopwatch. So he dashed onto the perfect target and even they had a stopwatch. Finally, he decided to settle the score with his real target all along, the control ward. Larson was laughing through Odo's antics. Oh, how he laughed. Ha ha ha, he laughed in rapturous glee. But when you deny an honorable top laner from getting a kill with a stopwatch, that is a sick joke, sir. A sick, sick joke indeed. And you'll forgive me if I chortle no longer. Speaking of laughing stocks, a rematch of the ages. Reckless's return to face off against his new team and old team with a new support versus old support and a puppet of himself. It was another good match. After a year of separation, G2 did not come quietly. They packed the entire crowd with fans. And if G2 were everywhere, Fnatic were nowhere. After surviving the most dangerous part of the early game, they flipped it and donated three kills to Han Sama's Draven, giving him the earliest mythic item in LEC history. If Fnatic are going to move on from that and the throw versus Vitality, they're going to need to black out more than just Reckless's arms. Which brings us to our biggest grudge match today. Kaiser versus Mad Lions and his former duo Karzy. Both are coming in hot. Both are coming in undefeated. But someone has to win and someone has to lose. That is literally how League of Legends works, except for like a year in Europe. But that's a grudge match for another time. Don't let Kaiser's calm demeanor trick you into thinking he doesn't hold a grudge. Did you know that Karzy used to be called crazy before he played with Kaiser? I'll never forget the time I saw Kaiser punch crazy straight in the face so hard Karzy forgot how to spell. That was a crazy dream I had. A Karzy crazy dream. Anyways, you won't want to miss Game 5 today when Mad Lions and Vitality face off. Kaiser's going to win lane so hard, Karzy's going to forget his own name again. It's Kaiser versus Crazy. It's another grudge match! <laughs> Good. Welcome back, everyone, to Berlin. It's Monday, so I'm really happy to see that the studio is full um, because this is the first time. I mean, we've had some tiebreakers on Monday. At that, some point. Not since at I've some ever been here. Time. Crazy times. It's been a Crazy long time times. ago. Uh, of course, thank you for the grudge match. Yeah. It's actually really epic. And Goldberg, welcome for the third day. How are you feeling? Uh, no grudges from my side, so I'm feeling kind of good. I'm leaving that one we to We can end start up. a grudge. Yeah, if you want. At the end of today, there will be something here. You want to go, bro? 
Oh, oh, oh yeah, I do. Okay. okay. I'm going to go through some analysis. No, no, we're going to yeah, so hard at analysis. Uh, starting with the standings then, um, we have four teams that are undefeated so far in Koi Mad Lions G2 and Team Vitality. Um, two in the middle of the pack, and then I think at the bottom with Fnatic Goldberg, that's quite the shocker. I think that is the biggest question mark of most people. It is Fnatic so far, but it's also nothing short of a surprise. But we've seen it in the past as well, right? It's not the first time that Fnatic will have have a slow start. The problem is, if they lose their game today, that's already already one third of their regular season that's it's lost. Crazy. So it's so much more impactful for them now. Yeah, luckily competition from here on out should theoretically get easier for them, but Excel also at the bottom of the standings. Uh, a bit surprising. You do say, yeah, five different players coming in from five different teams. Maybe it takes some time to gel, but that is a tough position to be starting with. At the same time, SK and Astralis need every win they can get to break out of 9-10 here, which already you can see it's a, it's a tight race there. Yeah, at the top of the table, though, they're not stressing. Team Vitality, I think, even though some things were a bit touch and go when it comes to in the games, they clutched it out and they won. G2 on an absolute tear. And then the Mad Lions and Koi as well. Uh, I, I think there's nothing to argue with here. They have looked the strongest all round. Yeah, I think most impressive for me, uh, Koi expectations were already high, but uh, Mad Lions yeah. coming in, playing some really strong team fates uh, in the mid game to mm -hmm. close a couple of games out. And G2's early game, flawless. Speaking of... Uh, Mad and Vitality, they are undefeated, and they're facing each other in the grudge match in Game 5. So let's see what Kaiser had to say about facing his old team. <laughs> I think it's going to be super fun to play against Mad Lions again, because for one, they have Kazi coming back, my old ADC, and Hillisang, of course. I think they're going to be crazy bot lane. So it's going to be really fun, and in general, just like trying to beat them. My former team, I guess, making sure that I'm better than them, right, and proving that to myself. I don't think there's like much bad blood. Of course, we had like our differences, right? I mean, that's why we parted ways. But I think it's not really like personal. I just want to beat them because I played with them for like two years. Of course, we were like uh, really good friends as well, right? So it's just like healthy competition, I guess, right? And even more so with Mad Lions, of course, because this was my only LEC team. It is the Mad Lions! I'm a bit attached to them, right? And of course, I, I want to just beat them and, and stomp them to the ground. Ah, he's so German. He's so deadpan. He's like, yeah, you know, grudge match, uh, this and that's cool. Uh, of course, I know cars. You've been with Mad Lions for a while. Yeah, I want to stomp them. Like, <laughs> it's nice. Uh, no how room much for uh, grudge match. Yeah, it's it's good, but it's true. He's been. On Mad Lions the whole time, he's been in the LEC and really been a staple for that lineup. Um, Ender, you said it already, really impressed with them. So how do you think this one's going to play out versus Vitality? Oh, this one, it's its really tough because I think that the bot lane for Mad Lions has looked very strong for them. So I do sort of give them an edge coming into this match. I think my brain is telling me Mad Lions look strong. They're probably going to draft something that gives them a lot of team fight options later into the game, especially out of the mid lane position. So I've got to lean towards them, but there's always the surprise factor of some of the players on Vitality. Exactly, but I also just think like the bot lane, yeah, I completely agree. I think Mad Lions have the edge, but if you have to take it somewhere where it's actually extremely close, you have to take it up towards that jungler, right? You have Elioia, who's been the best current jungler in a league for a really long time now, and now you have a newcomer in Bo, who's been on an absolute terror as well, and they have quite not a one-dimensional playstyle, but they're flexible. We've seen Elioia on the Wukong, but we've also seen him on the Sejuani. We've seen Bo on the Graves, but we've also seen them on the Sejuani. So it's just the fact that they're so multi-dimensional between these two junglers. I really hope, like, Bo versus Elioia, we get to see Bo bust something signature out, like the Olaf or something Olaf-inspired. I don't want him on the Sejuani playing for the ganks. Even on the Graves, he went for a level 2 gank. I'd really like to see him bring some of that flavor, some of the promises that we were expecting to come on through. And so much uh, is about of course, the jungle and the support synergy. So Kaiser, of course, has some insight, right, into Alyoya and how so everything oh, yeah. could be working. How much of an upside is that going to be, knowing that so much has been uh started from the jungle in these early games in the season. I think there's there's a certain element of that, right? Because you're going to sort of know the, the tendencies or how the player thinks, like off of a reset, are they looking to immediately pat the camps? Are they looking for a gank? These sorts of things. Um, but at the end of the day, it's been a while and the game has changed a lot. So, so I don't think El Yoya has ever been a very readable jungler. True. So Kaiser's going to have a little, but it's not enough to actually have great info. Yeah, I think that's a good point. When it comes to both of them, uh, they're great junglers in their own, right? Bo had a fantastic start here into the LEC. You know, he's played 
Razor already, uh, he's played Jankos, so Ayoya might be next. But I feel like it's so exciting just because of that. You can't really pin them down. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to solidify yourself as the best jungler in Europe, it is Ayoya you got to beat. And there's not much more to add to that. Both junglers so far haven't really shown any dents in their play style. And it's just two guys who's coming in on a hot streak now who's looking to solidify who they are. Three in and zero also, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, you got to take down a couple of names to beat it. El Yoya is kind of like the jack of all trades jungler, does everything at a really high level. So this is going to be a big match twin. I'm excited to see Abo versus Malrong beat the insane early game yeah. ganker as well. You can knock some of those names off the list. You can put yourself up there at the top. Absolutely. Going to be a fantastic one later in the day. But of course, over the last couple of days, we've saved a couple of interesting in-game voice comms. So let's have a listen into some shot calling. No, 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 he's split, he's split. Let's fight. There you go. They're gonna flash. I'm gonna follow the Okay, okay we, can, we can just go. We can just yeah, go, forward, go, go, go forward, go forward, go forward. Go Cassante, go Cassante, guys. Cassante, Cassante, Cassante. Go Cassante, nice, nice. We can end, we can end. We can end here. Go mid, go mid. Nice, well played. I think, I think. No, no, no. It's okay, it doesn't matter. Hey guys, can you wait until I kill the Ash? I'm gonna kill Ash. Okay, okay, okay. Let Yanko swarm KD. Yeah, because my KD Okay, let me let yeah, me kill. We can make it low HP and wait. Okay, nice, nice GG. Nice. <laughs> good nice. job, good job. Yeah. Nice team play, nice team play. Wow, yeah. Ruby. <laughs> nice, wow, Ruby, Ruby. Nice, uh, team nice. Wait me, just wait me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finish, finish, finish. No, 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 no wait, no, no, wait, no. wait, 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 wait. Okay. Kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. Kill him, kill him, yeah, I know. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Finish, can I me, can I me? Do place, do place, do place, do place, do place. Go, go. Do place, Ari, too. I help, I help, I help. Go, go, nice, nice, nice. Do place, do place. Yeah, we chase. Yeah, we kill them all, no? They're Boom! Nice. Okay, go there, go there. No, 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 let me die! Oh. The <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Wait, who let the tank? Stop I did? cringing. Okay, all the Aatrox. Yeah, it was me. <laughs> oh my ah! god. Always fun. Uh, the look-ins to... Uh, why are you giggling? What was funny? It's just stop cringing it after they have to go for yeah. the Baron. It's it, great. It's like some people are like, I wonder what pro player comms are like. They must be like thinking in five-dimensional chess and they're just like, let's go on this guy, let's bleep this guy. Let's bleep. It's like, you know, well, it's not that complicated. <laughs> uh, who was it that? Maybe it was Perks that said that he was like teaching, um, you know, his Mandarin and Korean speakers some words like cringe and stuff. Like yeah. they're learning. <laughs> and they, I mean, it? Proton I, did write cringe after he saw the killed Winder. That was it. So. exactly what happened. And he's like, just write cringe. And then I was like, what is that? And it's like, yeah, Just write it, it, trust means. me. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, but you can watch more funny and interesting voice comms in Mic Check, as always, releasing every Wednesday on youtube.com slash LEC. I'm always looking forward to those. It's a cool insight into the teams, mm. and usually they're just edited really well and extremely funny. Um, let's go into a bit of a discussion point. Uh, it's something that changes every couple of years in the LEC or even every split. And I want to ask my analysts, which role currently, after 10 games in the LEC, looks the most stacked? It's going to have to be jungle. Oh. It's jungle, baby. It's completely OP. <laughs> What's this then? Oh my god. Oh my god. Shocks! Shocks, is that yeah. you? You gotta help me. There's this guy with a shotgun. He's after me. Then this girl showed up. She's got giant fists. I don't know what to do. Uh, what? Dude, just walk off the green screen set. Where I... Oh my god. Over here. Oh. It's a green screen oh, okay. in there. Yeah, got yeah, room yeah, for no, you. Get back over here. Cool. Yeah. I don't know what I was worried about. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, the jungle does get scary sometimes. Oh, All those yeah. bushes, it does. Especially with the different rifts, like the ocean one with the big brushes. Dude, those are, that's real spooky. That's what were I they, just Were at. they hot on your tail? Are they going to come a here? It's yeah, they come on, sit down. Um, but yeah, jungle, uh, I guess you all agree. So, Goldberg, why is jungle so stacked? Well, I think you can just take all the different players we have in our league currently right now, right? There's Bo coming in with a super carry style. We still have facilitators like Malrong. We still have Jankos, who's been a goat of Europe for such a long time. And of course, Ayoya at the top that we just talked about earlier. It's just the fact that top five of our junglers are just world class. And Yikes coming in looking like a superstar already for G2, playing through uh, jungle and bot. Razorx on that list, who was competing at Worlds and managed to take a game off T1, right? That's six junglers already off the top of the names that could be near the top fighting for that first and second place in the LEC. And even if you don't think about the names, you just look at the league at whole, like especially day one, our junglers were so creative and so active in the early games as well. It's felt like everyone had what, like four months and they came in with like their level one through three plan and yeah. they came up with creative ways to invade the jungle, play off their lanes, set up for level two ganks. It was excellent. So a lot of that I guess is based off what we've seen in the early games, both uh, in the invades as well as the creative ganks maybe, uh, you know, in those early games. But have you been able to discern how good they are when it comes to team fights and stuff? Or do you need a little bit more tape? Is someone standing out in terms of 
being better than the rest. Hmm. I think for jungle especially, it comes down to communication. Whether mm -hmm. you're playing a carry or a tank is one thing. Your job changes, whether you're getting resources or you're being more of a leader. And I think we saw that the best example, I think, is Bo. When yep. he's playing Graves, yes. he calls where he wants fights. But then when he's playing things like Sejuani, he needs to call when he wants fights rather than where. And when around the Baron, I think, was the best example. I think it was, uh, they were trying to finish a Baron. Heretics was trying to steal it. Yankos was close. He was very patient. He was telling them, stop, stop, stop. Photon goes over, zone him away. Perk says, let's finish. He's like, no. No, no. <laughs> wait, we're going to make sure this is a good Baron, and then they pulled it off. Yeah, and even if you're not looking at the communication, that game versus Fnatic again, just at the mid lane where they had some fighting around, Bo had still a team fighting as well. It gets the triple curl already very early into the game. Even after Fnatic got that Baron, the fact that they were able to team fight their way out of that and come back into the game where maybe the communication wasn't the key essence, but also the individual role skill, it has been super impressive from this guy. So it's just Bo. Yeah, well, <laughs> just Bo. You well, just said there any stands out, so yes, we are going to say Bo. I will say, the one thing I want to sort of keep track of as we continue through the year, because it's a little too early to call, yeah. is tracking, especially on like the heavy engaged, like tankish junglers. Uh, think like maybe a Vi, Sejuani, champions that really need to dive into the back lines. You think in the past it's been picks like Hecarim and Jarvan. Like you mm. have to have such an, a good understanding of what your back line can actually accomplish. Because how many times in the past we've seen like Hecarim players just absolutely send it, get melted without the need, uh, uh, needed follow? I had that in pro play. When Jarvan was meta, I would always go way too deep and I'd be looking behind me and my team was just miles away and that happens on Vi and Maokai as well, and that's where support is so important. You need someone that can back you up. And I think in Europe, they're playing so many engaged supports. Things like Rakan, we've seen Nautilus. Things like Alistar can pair well with Kalista. Leona from Kaiser in the Vitality game. When you have a champion that can go in next to you, it kind of makes it so much easier rather than having an enchanter who wants to sit next to their AD carry, sit next to their mid laner, play really slow. These dive carry junglers can benefit so much from having these melee supports. And I think the only real region right now that I've seen playing this, uh, this kind of style is Europe. You know, the LPL and the LCK are always leaning towards trading off Lucian Nami, trading off Seri Lulu. But here in Europe, it's been a lot of melee sports in the first week. Yeah, I think the only exception to that rule may be the Heimerdinger we also saw from G2 in the first game of their series. But the point still stands. It's the fact that you're teaming up with CC and especially Yike as well has benefited tremendously off his bot lane and is specifically Mickey, not only just on the Heimerdinger, but also on the Nautilus to set him off. So this support jungle synergy has been so pivotal for the first two days of LEC so far. Yeah, and one of the things I love to see is like the level one, level two all-ins in the bot lane that the sports mm. are kicking off, G2 obviously doing that a bunch, and what it can enable you to accomplish, whether it's setting up for like a third wave dive, stacking it up into the tower, or you just invade with the ending the jungler later in the game too, just piecing out, going to help out at an eight minute herald or something piecing like this. Out. Like, <laughs> <See you later>. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, 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 it's this idea of being able to win out through the bot lane yeah. does so much to help out the jungler who we just said, it's the most stacked. So you want to see more of that. But I think what was also really curious is the fact that what I personally did not expect is that we've actually seen quite a few top laner get some resources from the rest of the map. It's not just let's put them on weak side. Some of that comes down to the meta picks we currently had. For example, Odo Amne in the beginning on the Cassante, despite being the one with little to no resources, still found solo kills. I think another top laner you would have to mention would be Photon on yeah. the Jax too, because he's just been so exceptional. And even Tugenda was enabled on the Renekton too, the same for Odo yesterday. So I'm finally starting to see top laners who's having impact in the early to mid game. Yeah, I think it's it's one of those things where it's like, pull one out for your top laner, your local resident yeah. top laner. Yeah. You look at some of these teams, bot side's over, you know, top lane's going well, there's a solo kill up there for their side, but then they press tab and the whole bot side is lost. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, we, we've seen these solo kills and it just can't be converted into win. Whether or not it's like the lane bullies or like the Fioras of the world. Like, I feel like this has always been a problem for, for EU. Like, can you actually win a game with a split push champion? Like, how do you actually make that break up on a side lane? How do you get that into the team fights. And I don't think we've quite seen that just mm -hmm. yet. A lot of time left in the season, but this has historically been a weak point for you. Yeah, and Tom Matisse actually wrote a really curious, uh, interesting article I read just before our show went live as well with Odo having a quote that we see it every time as Worlds. Whenever Worlds start, top lane just becomes the most OP role all of a sudden. And everyone is like, well, top lane has always been OP. At least that's how Odo feels about it. And he just feels like, well, it's about time that other people here in EU realize that top lane doesn't only have to matter whenever we come around worlds. Top lane's good right now. It's just a fact, and I think this comes back to your point as well, And uh, We don't play around it to the point where we play around top to end the game. Quite often we play around top lane to get a lead in the early game, and 
we don't do much more with it. Mm, interesting. I, I think the best example of that is you look at the worlds where Rogue was up against Damon in the group stage, yeah. playing against Lucian tops, just getting solo killed. We saw the Fiora <laughs> top of BB get solo killed by Sejuani. They go into this carry playstyle. And I think that's the beauty of having players like Photon and Chasey and Evie coming in, these yeah. import top laners. Uh, Bo and Malrang we saw last year. They increase the level of the league to the point where different playstyles are being approached in the league that you have to play against. So when you go to international tournaments, you've got more styles that you can choose from. Uh, so I think these imports coming in are really leveling up the league. To bring it back to EMEA for a second, though, it's funny because I remember like when I first joined the league as a caster, like right before my first playoffs was coming up, I was chatting with Yamato Cannon because uh, I, I, I forget what the match was, but I was like, oh, I think top lane's really going to decide this in the BO5s in playoffs. And he's like, <laughs> no, it actually just won't. No. In, in EU, <laughs> when Those it becomes. comes to BO5s, <laughs> you're going to see every team start picking scaling ADs and then camping bot lane. I was like, that's ridiculous. This would uh, never happen. Yep. And sure enough, that's always exactly the comfort for our teams. I think that's a great point because, uh, yeah, when we got to those international tournaments or when we get to them, this has always been a sore point. Um, to tie up the discussion that we had in terms of stacked role, though, um, I didn't really hear, I only heard like Bo and Oduwamne. So what makes jungle so stacked? Like, name me the names. Who are the most uh, impressive ones? I think you can just look at playstyles. Yankos, Goat of Europe, just incredible experience. Mm. Malrang with this crazy playstyle, the way he approaches games. You've got Yaik, who looks like just a super carry right now for the side of G2, a hugely different playstyle for them. You know, G2 love to play through top and mid. Now they're playing through jungle and bottle all of a sudden, right? So uh, Razork was on the poppy and he was very supportive to his team. Each of these players didn't bring different things to their, to their team, I think. And what about the marksman? Like top three, you're saying jungle support? <laughs> <Top Ender. one? laughs> yeah. The best AD carry doesn't even play AD in Europe. Uh, it's Bo. Yeah, it's Samira, have you seen it in solo queue? Yeah. AD carry. Yeah, forget forget that. He's also playing the Graves. We have Kindred in the jungle. All the best ADs are just played in other roles. Just Either get, jungle they just get or support. Shot. All right. Jin and Asher supports. What's going on? They just yeah. play poke champs these days. At Endercast on Twitter. Um, <laughs> any case, let's take a look at the schedule and what we're going to see in terms of those stacked roles. Uh, Fnatic versus Koi is catching my eye. In Immediately, of course, because Fnatic is totally with their backs against the wall. It's a rematch of the summer semifinals of last year, but of course. G2 Astralis. G2 Astralis? I'm hyped. Ooh. You know why? Because G2 is going to lose, know. aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> G2 is always going to find a way to lose to a bottom tier uh, team right now. I can feel it. They just look great in the first couple days and then they just bomb out. Oh, and so important also, right? These final games, I guess. Uh, yeah, of course, if you're already on 2-0, obviously you want to make it to 3-0. But you do not want to go into that second week having already lost three games, right? So I'm looking at you, um, Fnatic. I'm looking at you, SK. Yeah, winning is good. It's, winning is good. It's, it's you even, don't want to lose in the BO1s. It's even ones. better now. Yes. Isn't it crazy? It used to be... <laughs> Nine games! You, you, no, no, you used to have so much time yeah. Yeah, to, now like, you've got non poop the bed. <laughs> one patch read and you're you out. Have, you have no time. Yeah, it's, it's funny crazy. how Fnatic and XL are at the bottom, the British boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I was going to say, you in know, the past two, there was always, like, a team that would, like, pop off. Like, I'm thinking, like, Misfits 2018, I'm thinking Excel recently. Yeah. Like, they just crush early yeah. and then lose every game for yeah. the last five weeks. Hey, you get to avoid that yeah, part that now. How great is either. that? Fun fact. This okay, is the first final. split in the L in L LEC and EULCS history that there's no British player competing. Damn. Wow. And that's why the British teams are at the bottom. I rest my case. That is... Damn. That's, I would, <laughs> Have you I heard about know. Danes? I don't know if that's depressing. <laughs> That's well, fine. I'm fine I'll be with back it. one day, don't <laughs> I'm worry. Fine with it. Uh, anyways, <laughs> Team Heretics versus SK is our first game, and Laura standing by with SK's jungler, Markun. <laughs> Thank you, Shox. And Markun, thank you for joining me ahead of today's game. I want to know how the mood is within the team and everybody because it feels like you didn't have the results you expected so far. Yeah, I mean, I think the mood is still pretty good as, uh, as a team. I think we actually have pretty good camaraderie for mm -hmm. even how short we've been together. So I think everyone is still looking up and also because in practice we've shown that we can do it and I think we, we've played a lot better there. So there's still belief. It's a lot better than if we also were losing in practice because then you know, I think your belief goes down. Yeah, and I'm really happy you mentioned this because I kept on hearing that SK was doing so well in scrims. How do you explain that it didn't translate in stage so far? I, I mean, I'm not sure entirely what the reason is, but yeah. basically we just don't do what we do in scrims as much on stage, like in terms of communication and the place we see. And so, I mean, I wish I knew the exact reason because we're still trying to figure it out and, and fix it, of course. But yeah, we're basically just not doing the same things as we do in scrims. And talking a bit more about you and your performance, I remember with Excel, especially last year, you were this early game, aggressive jungle, finding opportunities for your team. What is different this time when it comes to the players you're playing with and the fact that you haven't been able to channel what you were able to do last year? Uh, I mean, it's quite a big difference because last year I think I had four veterans who were very calm in the game. 
this year I, I have a bit more less experience in the team, so it's a bit more hectic. And for, yeah, for my performance, I think I've been kind of sprinting at these last two games. <laughs> Not very happy. But yeah, I'm looking to turn it around. And I mean, I'm still looking to do stuff in the early game. And I think last uh, or yesterday it just didn't work out. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping to <laughs> get back on the good early games soon. <laughs> you know what? It's still the beginning of the year. First two games. I mean, everything is still possible, of course. But uh, you were telling me that, of course, you have more experienced players with you last year. How does it change your role, role in game now that you maybe have more responsibility when it comes to leading younger players? Uh, yeah, so I think last year, in game especially, it was very calm still because I think, I mean, all four of my players had like a lot of games. Everyone knew kind of what to do. And I think now the games are a bit more stressful because everyone is still kind of new to this. And I think everyone's a bit less experienced. So for me, I feel like I have to be a bit more calm and reserved and try to keep my emotions check as much as possible because others around me are not doing it as much as mm -hmm. last year. And when it comes to the game today versus Team Heretics, tell me what, how it's going to be about facing Yonkers in the jungle and where should we look at, especially in the early game? Uh, I think it will depend on draft, which <laughs> I don't want to give away too much. Right. But I think probably going to have to look at shutting down their mid jungle and trying to get our own online. And I think as long as we try to play like we do in scrims, I think we'll have a pretty good game. Well, I hope you can channel this scream energy, Markun. Thank you so much. Thank you. Best of luck for thank today. You. And Shocks, back to you. Thank you so much, Laura, and thank you, Markun, as well. Uh, that is a tricky one. If it's going so well in scrims and you have so many young players around you, Kadrol, then if it doesn't work, and it's not just not working, it's mm. absolutely not working, right, for SK right now. Yeah. That must be kind of a hurdle, right? A lot for the coaching staff to work on and for these young players to get their heads Definitely. in. Definitely, and Markun's the most experienced player on that roster. That's what makes it quite tough for him because he's supposed to be the consistent leader, but he's the one that's struggling, so all the pieces around him fall apart. He said there in the interview that he thinks mid-jungle needs to get ahead, so I think going to draft, they need to avoid things like Kassinen as well, get a pushing lane for Surtis to make sure he can actually start to impact the rest of the map. I think you see with rookie teams coming in, their biggest strength normally is their early game. They normally come in with a great early game, then their mid to late game, they fall apart because they lack that experience in decision making. But it's actually the opposite right now for SK. Yeah, I also just feel like they just need to not make it complicated for themselves. Reason why Makun was so good in summer, well, one thing was the volleyball, but the other thing was that Makun and Nuke Dog was actually in the early stages of summer, in the first few weeks, one of the best mid jungle duos. And reason for that was Nuke Dog would be on Lissandra, Nuke Dog would be on Vega. Mm. Things that had easy, mm. applicable CC for a jungler to come around to make something work was exactly what they needed. And it's not rocket science, it's just get CC, get a kill, gold, let's try and get a lead of it. Yeah, and I feel like that role has now shifted to jungle, where you've yeah. got Vi and Maokai and Sejuani, things that will just lock down and set up your mid laner. So it's a different style that Markun's having to adapt to. We've seen the Kindred, but definitely struggled in that game. Yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, of course, hopefully it comes online for SK like it did in scrims. Moving on to their opponents, Team Heretics. Um, I think we are all just curious to see how this team is going to evolve, right? Because of the combination of the first LGL import, for instance, into the LEC with Evi, as someone like Yanko, some newer players or some younger players around it. It's very interesting for me to watch and I think 1-1 one, one is, a, is a fair result so far. Oh yeah, 1-1 one, one, and you know Ebi so far is 2 for zero in the solo kills as well. He's been <laughs> finding, even against Photon, been able to find uh, kills for himself and he's been a madman isolated. The thing is once again that you want to translate it to a team thing but if you only have to focus on individuals in the beginning while the team's still gelling together, I think Ebi has been a pleasant to watch. Definitely is and if you ask me in the offseason what kind of top laners worldwide would you look at to import? Evi wouldn't be near the top of that list, but so far he's been doing quite well. Taking someone from a minor region and putting him in can be a bit risky, but he's got so much experience that he even said in interviews, he's just there to play what the team needs from him. He's not there to be some kind of superstar carry. He is adaptable and flexible, and he's been very consistent so far. The best thing to me about this roster is I think with time they will grow because Peter Dunn is there and Peter Dunn has yeah. shown results with rosters and this has got a roster, the boomers and the zoomers, you know, you've got, you've got the Ankos and Evie on the top side, uh, the rest of the younglings, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the rest of the younglings <laughs> down the bot side, they need time to adapt, didn't like the draft yesterday with the Cassidy and the Sejuani Brown, we'll see if they can pick up something different Yeah, but game. that's interesting though with the Peter Dunn thing because Ebi as well for the longest time has been the top, top laner in Japan for, you know, years now as well and Peter Dunn has been one of the few individuals who's always had a lot of praise for him so yeah. it's really curious to see that when he finally got back to Europe 
Europe to build his team again, Ebi was like one of the first people he also wanted back on that roster. And right? it's a great vote of confidence for the LGL in general as well, right? Uh, he also had a really cool tweet because, of course, his name, Ebi, means shrimp. And then he said that in uh, the Japanese community, actually, they say that they call him crayfish when he makes a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> when he makes a mistake, when he plays well, they call him a spiny lobster. A spiny lobster. Yeah. So what do we think so far? Spiny lobster or, or crayfish? Um, I wouldn't say he's a crayfish. I think that'll be doing him dirty. Yeah. I, think he's, I think both games he's played, he solo killed the enemy top laner. So yeah. minimum, he's got but the Kassan spine. Cassante diff, though, also. Cassante diff, maybe. <laughs> but we'll allow it for this time. But yeah. I think for now, definitely a little bit of spine on him. So I'd say lobster. Yeah, definitely lobster. Yeah, like What's it a, a spiny lobster? I have, I have no, no idea. idea. Like, what? Is it a type of lobster or is it like... <laughs> a... Is it just because it's like proper build? We're not very like, fancy. Like, We have no idea. What does a lobster look like? <laughs> I have no idea. What do you what? mean? What does a lobster look like? Are they big? Are they small? Is there a spine? Like, what's the biology going on here? It's like, they have a spiky spine? No, they have shell. They're shellfish. I'm going to ask our casters because we're getting into Team Heretics versus SK with Dagda and Quickshot. 